Thanks, Kari Ahmed. And my talk is about the use of interface learning as a paradigm towards seamless integration of multi-scale, multi-physics, and multi-fidelity models, or what we call M-cube models, for, uh, for short. So in different applications in science or engineering, we might encounter systems that have multiple components where each component has its own characteristics, its own geometry, and maybe different requirements. For example, if we consider this gas turbine, we have a compressor. We have, we have a compressor. We also have a burner or a combustion chamber. We, and finally, this turbine section. Now, assume that we would like to perform a simulation of the system. The first approach is to adopt a unique or universal solver for the whole system which takes care of everything and uses the minimum assumption. And of course, we know, this, we know that this approach is naive and not practical. Instead of that, we would rather use a different solver for each section. But at the end, we need to make sure that the solution from each solver at their interfaces is matching. This means that at the, the exit of the compressor actually represents inlet boundary condition for the burner. And the exit of the burner is the inlet to the uh, turbine section and so on. So in this example, we have some physical interfaces or boundaries between different components. The system also might have different length scales or spatial scales. And so we need to use different solver with different resolution. And the solution at the end, at the interfaces, could match or be consistent. Finally, we can have different physics interacting with each other. So this can be in different components or even in the same component. This is clear in something like fluid structure interaction, where the fluid flow might cause some mechanical stresses or deformation. And this deformation in turn adjusts the boundary condition and affects the flow behavior. So in this case, different models have to interact and to communicate with each other to share some sort of, in of the information. So here, instead of having a physical boundary, we have a, a virtual or imaginary interface between models. So in principle, Interface learning refers to using or utilizing statistical learning tools or machine learning tools to provide good or consistent interface conditions to couple different solvers or different scales or descriptions to maximize the computational efficiency of the, of the whole framework. So in this figure, we sketch or describe different directions or area where we believe interface learning can be really useful. Currently, we are working on many of these blocks. But for the, sake of the time, for the sake of time, I will just focus on two of them. The first is drone foam coupling. And as I mentioned, we might be working on different components or scales or physics. And among these, if we observe that there is a pattern or a coherent structure that repeats itself or, or dominates the, the dynamics in this part, so we realize that this, there is a room for model order reduction to reduce the computational cost in this part. Then we can reserve our computing resources or third order models in other parts. So at the end of the day, the reduced order model or ROM and the full order model or ROM will need to share some information and to communicate. Second block here is related to the use of different descriptions where we can, for example, use a micro scale model for some part and a macro scale model for another part. And we need to move, to move information from one side to the other. So in, this, in the first part of the presentation, I will focus on the use of interface learning to achieve efficient and effective coupling between reduced order models and full order models. In the beginning, I will just give an idea or quick overview about model order reduction. So we might have the Navier-Stokes equation representing our full order model, and we would like to solve this PTE. First, we build our mesh or grid in space and time, and we solve this equation at each grid point. So here, in essence, we track the evolution of the flow at each grid point or cell in the domain. On the other hand, if we really know or observe that there are a few coherent structures in the flow, we can approximate the field as a superposition of the contribution of, the contribution of some few bases or, mo uh, or modes, which represent these underlying patterns. So then to model the dynamics, we can simply plug this approximation in the original governing equation and do something like Galerkin projection to end up with a reduced order model or Galerkin reduced order model or zero. Eventually, we only solve for the, this A coefficients and we only have R of them. 
and open R is a small number to reduce the computational cost. To describe the rom-com coupling framework, I use this cartoon to represent the systems that we are dealing with. Just we can perform something like multi-fidelity domain decomposition and to consider room for the left part and home on the right part. And like, and as we see here, both parts have some interface. Then we perform some modal decomposition of the left part. And we assume that it can be totally represented by phi, psi, and z. And for the sake of order reduction, we consider the projection on just phi to build or construct our reduced order model. The first approach to couple the ROM and FOM is what we call direct prolongation, which means that we, we solve the ROM in the reduced space. Then we do the reconstruction or prolongation to the full space using only the information contained in phi. It's sketched here by this sharp or coarse solution. This solution is then passed to the full order space for order model of the right part here. Of course, we would like to interfere here and improve this coupling if we are not happy with it. So the first correction method that we are introducing is the prolongation followed by machine learning correction or PCI. So in PCI, we take whatever DPI gives us here in the full order space. And we, we use some neural network architecture to provide a correction in the foam space, in the full order space. So since we are doing the correction in the full order space, this can be okay or good for if we are dealing with 1D problem, but considering 2D or 3D cases, a correction in the full order space becomes really complicated. Here we interfere in the room space to improve the room on coupling. First, we introduce the machine learning correction followed by prolongation or CPI. So in this case, in this case, we add the correction in the reduced space or the low order space. Then we do the reconstruction or prolongation step on the corrected ROM. This part on the corrected ROM, not on the original ROM. Finally, we propose machine learning uplifting followed by the prolongation or UPI. So in this case, in addition to the correction in phi space. We also use the neural network capabilities to reveal some of the nonlinear correlations between different subspaces. So this will just eventually will uh, provide some super resolution effect. So here we solve our room in the phi space for alpha, but at the end our solution will have information from phi and psi. So we have alpha and beta. Our first demonstration is the one D burgers problem. But here we just have an extra friction term to make it more interesting. We consider two sections of the domain with different physical properties. So in this case, we if we consider forward in time central in space finite difference framework, a finite difference scheme with nx equal to force equals to nine six, we find that the left part will require a delta t of about two point five times ten to minus six. With the same analysis, we find that a hundred times larger delta t will be sufficient for the right part. So here, if we consider the naive approach of a unique solver everywhere, we will have to follow the smaller delta t. Instead of that, in this case, we will use a reduced order model or ROM for the left part to provide interface boundary condition here. So we can use full order model on the right part with larger delta t to reduce the computational cost. So in this example, we assume that the interface at x be equal to 0.75. And the results here correspond to a ROM with only two, two modes in the left part and a form in the right part. And as we see here, the DPI result is not that good because there is a projection error and a closure error. And we haven't provided any correction here so far. But the, in here, in the PCI, we see it is almost identical to the form at the uh, interface. And again, here we remember that in PCI, we use the DPI information, but we do the correction only at the interface in the full space. So here, if, you not, if, you, if, we, if we notice here, we will see that in the left part, the PCI is matching the DPI, but at the interface, we will see some jump here, representing the correction at the full space, full order space. 
hey, here CPI is the correction in the low order space, which mainly takes care of the closure error. So we see that it is almost matching the TP or the true projection, which is the optimal information or maximum information that we can get from phi, phi basis. Finally, in UPI, in this UPI, we add correction and super resolution. So we have information from phi and psi. So we have some super resolution effect. Second demonstration is a really interesting one with the 2D business problem or smart cyclic flow problem. Initially, we have a fluid with different temperature in these two partitions. In particular, we have cold fluid on the right and hot fluid on the left with a vertical barrier at, at x equal to four. At time equal to zero, this barrier is removed immediately. So the cold fluid starts to slide below the hot fluid and they start the mixing. Here we have two main equations for the vorticity omega and temperature theta. And here the stream function psi is related to omega by this elliptic equation. And we know from the CFD, from CFD that the solution of this Poisson equation or elliptic equation is very expensive and actually represents the bottleneck in the whole computational pipeline. So to make a case, we assume that here we are more interested in the temperature T. So we assign a ROM solver for the vorticity and the stream function and a foam solver for theta or the temperature. So here we can think of this solver as dealing with different physics, but within the same domain. Here we use a room, this room approximation for omega and psi and build a galeric and room for the coefficient alpha. Here beta is the contribution of the temperature in the vorticity equation. And finally, we have the foam equation for the temperature. So for in this, frame, in this framework, we first solve with a room for one time step. Then we approximate psi using this relation. This psi is required to evolve with the foam equation one more time, one time step. After we evolve with the foam to compute theta, we update beta. And again, this beta is used in the room. So we repeat this procedure until the final time. And we can see here we have two-way coupling in this problem because the ROM and FOAM need to communicate and take information from each other at each at, at every time step. As I mentioned before, a correction in the full order space with 2D or 3D problems becomes cumbersome. So in this case, we only consider the interface learning correction in the low order space. So here we see that the CPI is adding a correction to the TPI solution in the low order space before reconstruction. Before reconstruction. While here in the UPI recovers or regain some of the finer details by providing a super resolution. So this was the, for the first part or the largest part of the presentation. In the second part, I will illustrate how interface learning can be helpful if we need to connect or couple different, level, different levels of descriptions or abstractions. In particular, we consider the coupling between a micro scale solver represented by the that is voltage man method or LBM and the macro scale solver represented by the full order a finite difference method or FDM. We consider the Fitzhugh Nagumo model to explain the idea where we have two variables U and V in the X direction and we have some reaction and, di and diffusion dynamics. First, if we consider the finite difference method, we can simply use the forward in time central in space scheme to discrete this, this governing equation. And then we solve simply for you and B, for you and B directly. In contrast, in LBM, we don't solve directly for you and B. Instead, we solve for the evolution of a particle distribution function f in some direction i with a corresponding velocity ci. For example, if we if we adopt the D1Q3 scheme, this means that we have a one-dimensional problem with three velocities. We have C negative, C plus or C positive, and C zero. So for the reaction diffusion model we have here, we evolve F using this equation. So where we have, we use it, we have this one equation for U and one equation for V. L equal to U and L, L equal to V. And here omega is the part responsible for the diffusion and the R is for the reaction. Finally, in order to, opt to obtain or reconstruct our observables U and V, we do this. Superposition. 
Now we consider cutting this domain into two zones and we apply FDM on the left part and LBM on the right part. And the interface is placed at the middle. So in the FDM, in the FDM part, we find that to evolve the state at the last point XFDM in this subdomain, we need information from the first point in the LBM domain. And to get this information, we can simply use this relation to reconstruct U and V from F, from the micro scale to macro scale. On the other hand, we, for the first point in the LBM do a subdomain, we need information of F at XFDM. And recovering uh, F from U and V is usually not straightforward, so we need to interfere here. So this simple 1D problem, we can use this zero order approximation to obtain uh, F1U and F1V at the last point in the FDM domain. Here we consider solving the whole domain with LBM as being the ground truth at this top row. And the middle here is using the zero order approximation. And as we see here, after some time, the error becomes really large. Now we can introduce a machine learning closure at the interface to provide better approximation of F1U and F1V. We use a very simple feed-forward neural network architecture with a single hidden layer with eight neurons to learn this mapping from U and V at the last FDM point and F minus one at the first LBM point to obtain F1 or F plus one at the same point. We can see this coupling. The coupling with ML closure or interface learning is accurate and stable with time. We also highlight that the framework is quite agnostic to the model, so we can use any machine learning tool or, alg or, or algorithm to achieve this coupling. For example, for high dimensional problem, we can use convolutional neural network or CNN. Just to be fair enough, we highlight that in addition to the zero order approximation, there is a first order approximation which yields very accurate prediction without any machine learning closure. But at the same time, we highlight that these high order approximations are not always available for, high, for complex problems. And the machine learning closure can really help in these situations. Okay, so that's it for today. And now I will be happy, I will be happy to take any questions or concern or comments. Thank you so much.